somehow through the morass that is American politics, we currently have a couple of good progressives in office. One of them is AOC. And yet again, I got misled by a video title. I thought she was, uh, I thought she was going to jump ship yesterday night and, uh, and vote uh, with Republicans because of the video title. No, no. She's on the ball. She's very much on the ball. And uh, she gave a great interview on MSNBC. It ties in, uh, it, it ties in with the chaos that is going on in the House that continued today. Quick update if you missed it. Kevin McCarthy failed again to uh, uh, become Speaker of the House. He could not get 218 votes. Uh, the MAGA holdouts, of which there are a solid 20 now, stuck to their guns. And you know who else stuck to their guns? Every Democrat. Every single one. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Here is AOC talking about it on MSNBC. Not falling for, uh, for the, uh, the tricks corporate media tends to try to play with wording, and uh, generally just having a good time enjoying Republican chaos. Here it is. Joining us now is Democratic Congresswoman from New York, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez, thank you so much for being here on, well, a day that will go down in the history books. Thank you for having me. Let's just start with what it was like to bear witness to this Republican fracture firsthand on the floor of Congress. How, how did you leave the chamber today? You know, I was um, I was honestly surprised. I did not think that Kevin McCarthy was going to have the votes in the first round, but I didn't think that it was going to be as catastrophic for him as it actually was. I think one of the things that we saw was, you know, we saw that there were reports of there being up to 20 holdouts on the Republican side, except Usually in the 24 to 48 hours before a vote, there are a lot of negotiations that happen. And Kevin McCarthy was engaging in some of those negotiations in order to bring that number down. Now, I didn't think he was going to have the vote at all, but uh, we at least thought that that number would be less. But to get into the high teens in, you know, nearly 18, 19 members uh, refusing to support his speakership is an astonishingly high number. And I think it very much speaks to the lack of faith uh, among elected Republicans that they have in Kevin McCarthy's speakership. And for him to have several months since the November elections and still not be able to clinch it, I think is very much a testament to a lack of leadership. Um, and it is very surprising. To it is a testament to his lack of leadership. We talked earlier when we did a live stream during the, the last house vote, house vote. By the way, we're going to go up again live at 8 for the next one. We talked earlier about Hakeem Jeffries' uh, display of, uh, of leadership skills. Uh, this is part of it. Democrats are not shaking. They're not... Uh, they're not breaking ranks. They are acting as one, which makes them stronger. Good on you. Kevin McCarthy didn't have the votes he needed going into this uh, and uh, this new session. And uh, he already moved his stuff into the Speaker's office, so much so that he opened himself up for well-deserved criticism on that arrogant front. And Matt Gates, a known child sex trafficker, uh, please sue me, you little punk. I would love discovery. Um, but nonetheless, it opened it up, him up for well-deserved criticism from Matt Gates, who wrote a letter asking, hmm, should we boot this guy out until we decide who the speaker's going to be? AOC's right on point. I see that, uh, but, uh, you know, in the contrast, on the Democratic side, we didn't have a single defection. And that unity is very much going to help us um, in, you know, hopefully being able to uh, secure some 
uh, procedural wins and take advantage of certain moments. And I definitely want to return to that topic in terms of the democratic unity and the conversations that have been happening, happening inside the caucus. But it did not uh, it did not go unnoticed, by, shall we say, on the Internet and elsewhere that you were on the floor having some conversations with Republicans, including Matt Gates and Paul Gosar. Can I'll be you honest, enlighten us at all as to, as to what those conversations were like? And is there any hope that you guys work together to get Hakeem Jeffries elected as Speaker of the House? You know, I am. Um, I think in chaos, anything is possible, uh, especially in this era. You know, it is unlikely, but it is there's always a possibility. I do think that in terms of some of those conversations, I mean, listen, some of us in the House of Representatives uh, are independent in certain ways from our party. And I do believe that uh, in some of those conversations, um, there are things that are happening on the floor. These machinations are happening on the floor. And sometimes the leadership of your party, uh, in this case, the Republican Party, will be making claims uh, in order to try to twist arms and get people in line. And a lot of times, information and truth is currency. Um, so sometimes to be able to fact check some of the claims that McCarthy is making, uh, whether Democrats are going to defect or not, et cetera, is important in order to keep him honest and to keep people honest in general. And so, you know, I think what was important today was to send the message that we were united uh, behind uh, Hakeem Jeffries as um, the now minority leader uh, or as leader of the Democrats and that there would be no defections, that Democrats are here, uh, we're not going anywhere. And if they want to play ball, we're open to that. That's that's going to make a lot of people, I think, on one side of the aisle very happy and a lot of people on the other side of the aisle very concerned. Is it your sense that there is a plan that the Freedom Caucus has? I mean, there's a real question about who's driving, the, who's who's running the operation here, who's driving the bus. Oh, is it Kevin McCarthy or is it, you know, Andy Biggs and Paul Gosar and Matt Gates? Well, I think one of the central challenges here is that in this in Kevin McCarthy's speaker run, within the Republican caucus, there was no number two. Uh, the Republican caucus did not really have a full-throated race for speaker. There Very true. And uh, it's coming back, obviously, it's coming back to bite them. But uh, the fact that they didn't even have an idea of who choice number two would be is sh is shocking. Uh, you saw <laughs> you see the MAGA people switching out who their number two, number three, number four is. Uh, but I don't I don't think there's really an excuse for, especially given the the history of uh, Republican speakers of the House, which is shady and full of scandal. Um, I don't think there's an excuse for not having. Just a backup plan, just out of practicality. There was no challenger uh, in the last and two months good, that has emerged. And I do I believe like that that is the central Republican problem. Uh, whether McCarthy pulls this through or not, the core concern here is who would ascend to that seat. I do not believe that Kevin McCarthy has the votes. I believe that uh, a lot of the opposition to him is very all. personal. I believe his leadership style uh, is incompatible with a lot of Republican members and certainly the Democratic caucus. Yeah. And so I think that is the central question. If not him, then who? Uh, you have certain members of the Freedom Caucus who have, of course, uh, nominated other people, but the rest of the Republican Party will not rally, I believe. They will not coalesce under Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan himself doesn't want it. They will not coalesce. Uh, Jim Jordan doesn't want people remembering that he... I think it was six. He had six wrestlers back when he uh, was a coach come to him and complain that they were being sexually abused and he did nothing. And there's no way, I'm sorry, AOC, let me get you on a better frame there. Uh, there's no way that he wants the attention that comes with being Speaker of the House. Someone uh, like Andy Biggs. And so the question is, mm -hmm. Is there anyone in their caucus that can build that consensus? If there isn't, uh, McCarthy's team may have to come to the Democratic Party. And if that's the case, 
then yes. what would that even look like? It's rather unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Could it result in a potential coalition government? Could we get Democratic chairs of committees uh, as a result? We don't know. Uh, but OK, so that is the one thing that made me think uh, maybe, maybe work with them. Personal take, though. No, you can't. Tr anybody with an R next to their name, you cannot trust their word. They have demonstrated their word is worth nothing. So this initial talk from AOC made me made me a little bit nervous um, because I, do, I just don't, any deal they say they got with Republicans doesn't mean it's going to happen. But she brings it back. Ultimately, it, what we saw here today is that in the last two months and now, Kevin McCarthy failed to unite his caucus and failed to even, you know, I think he failed to respect the power of the Freedom Caucus uh, enough as well. They are members of his party in order to build that coalition together. He failed as a coalition builder, not once, not twice, but three times. And Absolutely. we reconvene tomorrow morning. And I'm not quite Update sure today. what he could or times, would do that would change the times, calculus between today and tomorrow. Times. And that's a huge question. We know that, that approximately 7,000 boxes of pizza were delivered to uh, McCarthy's oh. office, which suggests it's going to be a long night of negotiating. You Let's move it past a little bit here. I also want to note that some of the Here requests made by these uh, made by these Republican holdouts are also small D Democratic in nature in terms of the yeah. rules of the House. You we know, talked about this as over well. a very long period of time, the concentration of power in the House of Representatives has has concentrated to an extraordinary amount in party leadership of both parties. And what we see from the House Freedom Caucus is point, their Nancy attempt, Pelosi. however guided, misguided, destructive, constructive, whatever your perspective is, they are making attempts to reform the rules of the House in a way that would dilute McCarthy or the Speaker's power and elevate the power of every of, of individual members in the House. And that, I think, is a, an essential crux that is part of, of the rub here in their inability to create an agreement. So a little bit ago when I was talking about how, uh, despite the fact that I uh, dislike Gates, I dislike Boebert, I dislike, and that's an understatement, everybody who is MAGA, um, we can use this chaos to progressive benefits because uh, their lack of understanding of politics, their lack of care about actual politics means they occasionally, by accident, wind up with uh, with policy suggestions that would be good that we would that we would appreciate just like when uh, right wingers were threatening to say well what if we make it a law that that Joe Biden has to release his tax return yes yes of course yes we would like that well what if any member of Congress had to yeah I'm gonna stop you right there yes sir we would love that. We actually care about the principle behind the thing. We actually want to know if our politicians are corrupt. So yes, she is touching on now um, that part of the reasons listed for the split in the Republican Party are, as she says, small d democratic issues that we can get behind. Don't think for a moment that the reasons listed are actually why they're doing it. They are only interested in uh, power grabs, MAGA. But uh, sure, we'll take advantage of that. Yeah. So, you know, if McCarthy really wants this, he really needs to look at how he can get to the 218 that he needs. And you got to find that math somewhere. If you can't get that vo those votes from the House Freedom Caucus, and he has provided many, many, many concessions, um, and it's just not working out. I, I, I got to ask you, um, you know, getting concessions from leadership can be done in many ways. And the House Republican Freedom Caucus has chosen a pretty public and fractious way to gain concessions. What happened on the Democratic side of the aisle in terms of this unbelievable unity in a very big tent party? Ooh. I mean, what was the conversation like between parts of the Democratic right, Party that are AOC much further left, here. much more progressive than some of the more centrist leadership, and in particular, Hakeem Jeffries, the, the, the new leader? Can you talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, you know, I think there are a couple of things that are that are happening right now. One is that in order for us to take advantage of the fracturing on the Republican side, we have to operate as a full entire block. This margin is extraordinarily slim. We're talking about a margin of four votes. And so if they get to a point where they lose four or five votes and we stay 100 percent united, then there are possibilities where if it's not this vote, it could be other votes. There are procedural moments in the House where you can prevent in their case, catastrophic legislation from coming to the floor if we remain united. I think some of these conversations coming forward is an acknowledgement of the severity of this point in history. Uh, we are talking about a very mm -hmm. real danger in a Republican-controlled House. And that could mean that a very narrow, slim margin of four to five votes could have implications on whether we can raise a debt ceiling. It could have yep. implications even on the 2024 election. And in, in you know, January 6th whether was or not all it's about the Democratic. refusal to certify every state's election okay. results. And it is no secret that Republicans have indicated that there are several who are willing to do it again. They are willing to reject certification to be prison, of a presidential election right if now. they do not like the results. And I believe that on the Democratic side, the acknowledgement of how fragile our democracy is in this moment is a critical part to that unity. We absolutely have differences. Um, but I think a willingness to put that aside in order to figure out how we can navigate and exploit some of these major moments to advance really the issues of working people, raise wages, protect health care, and really Point defend blink. a lot of the gains that we have made in the last two to three years is going to be very critical. I mean, I got to agree 100 uh, percent across the board uh, on, on AOC's uh, feelings there. We had a... Uh, hmm. Yeah, we had a uh, Rebel HQ video. Um, I'm actually going to probably play that video uh, tomorrow. It's part of a, uh, a larger talking point I want to uh, get to at some point. Uh, but recall the, the two things we've talked about today. Sam Cedar talking about how effective contacting your representative is. AOC talking about how narrow the margin is in the House. Let's combine those for a second. Right now, it's embarrassing to be a Republican. If you particularly, if you came, you grew up in a culture where being Republican was synonymous with being like a person that wears a suit and tie and and uh, does very practical business. It's never been the case that Republicans are good <laughs> at uh, handling money. In fact, they've they got us into our last two recessions, and Democrats are the ones that got us out of it. But if that's the culture they came from, their new electives, uh, their their newly elected representatives, and they're getting embarrassed on national television now for two days in a row. As a matter of fact, uh, going into another vote for speaker in just a couple of hours here. They are very likely wondering why the hell they signed up for the Democrats. If they come, excuse me, for the Republicans, if they come from a purple state, they're certainly thinking, I wonder if I could have made it if I went blue instead of red. Not a bad time to contact your representative if you're from a purple state. And if they are Republican, tell them, hey, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that you're there, but I'm embarrassed that you're a Republican. If you get an offer to change parties, I would support you. Just that simple. If you, if you decide to change parties, I will support you. If they're wondering if they should, if they could get away with it, you could right now, in 2023, change the majority in the House worth thinking about. You might be one of the five or ten calls necessary in order to push them over. So, if you're in a purple state, 
Contact your representative. Let them know you're okay with them supporting Democrats. They, in fact, yeah, if you're in a blue state, might be a good time to just to make sure we don't get anybody jumping ship. Might be a good time to say, attaboy. Whoever your uh, representative is, you may have business with them. 